Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Emily on my channel. It's winter. So today's topic is all about what it's like to be a blogger, do my job full time, what a day entails, how I earn my money, all of that sort of thing. You guys submitted loads of questions on Instagram, thanks for that. I've gone through them, I'm going to kind of pick them out at random and just answer a few in this video. So let's get started. I got a lot of questions about how I got started, how did I initially grow and how did I get my business off the ground. I have actually written a blog post about that so I will link it below for you guys. Um, so if you wanted to sit and have a little read of that you'll know exactly where I came from and how I made the the switch to full-time being as a blogger there's a really good Q&A on there as well um, at the bottom where loads of people have asked me questions and I've answered so that goes into a more in-depth um, answer but I guess the short-term answer would be I did like many bloggers two jobs at once for two years I was an agent looking after talent at a hair and makeup fashion photography agency so I was doing that as my nine to six Monday to Friday and then when I get home I was writing blogs shooting product shooting on the weekend and generally updating my Instagram and my blog and my YouTube when I had time so for two years I was doing it full-time and I'm not gonna lie it's hard work a lot of people think that um, you just need to Instagram a load and suddenly you'll gain traction and you can do it full time. I mean it has work like that for many people on Instagram but I always feel like if you want a platform and a business and a brand with sustenance and stuff you know and longevity where you're actually putting out content that's more than just a picture of you in a bikini on Instagram and I hold my hands up I do that too but you know I film videos I do um, ask Emily like topics and you know I, I do hauls and I write think pieces on my blog as well as using Instagram every day so it really is a cross-platform approach that um, makes me a brand I think it's hard work like I broke myself for two years and then I went full time which an opportunity came up and I just had to kind of take it when I quit my job and I was no longer working nine till six Monday to Friday I was then working nine till midnight Monday to Friday on just the blog I put in so much time and effort because I knew I had to make this work because I didn't have rent to pay and I had to feed myself and I no longer had a job with a steady income so I worked my ass off and I think when you work your ass off and you put that much time into something that and failure isn't an option then failure failure isn't an option and for me it just worked out and I think it's worth saying that when I went full time I actually only had just under 10,000 on Instagram. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I won't go full time until I'm at 40K or 50K. But for me, it wasn't just about Instagram. I had my YouTube and my blog as well, which were also, I was also getting sponsored work off. So I didn't feel like I needed like a massive Instagram following to go full time and earn money from what I was doing. So I had other streams of revenue. That kind of like answers the question, I suppose. Just, and I know it's not an easy answer and it's, there's no like magic one, two, three steps to follow, but it's a lot of hard work and if you're passionate and you not you don't want to fail then I honestly believe that you won't if you want something bad badly enough and you have a niche and you have a voice staying on the topic of like in the beginning uh, I've got a question here that says what motivated you to start your blog and your YouTube in the beginning and I touched on this on an ask Emily Q&A um, my first ever ask Emily which was kind of like a get to know me you know I was really honest about it I have always dreamed of being in a role uh, on a job where I make my own decisions, I am my own boss, you know, I decide what my working day looks like, if I want to go away at the drop of a hat I can, that's always a life I've desired to have for myself. There's few ways that you can do that as a freelancer but blogging for me was always like well you know why can't I do that as a job I never looked at blogging as like a pastime and sit in my room on a Saturday like I really like this lipstick blah 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 and I appreciate that loads of people out there are just blogging because it's a creative outlet for them but for me I saw the monetary potential in it um, so I thought why not do something I love I've got a journalism degree I love photography I love makeup and fashion why not do something I love and monetize it at the same time? So for me, it was always a business decision to start my blog and my YouTube just as much as it was a creative outlet. And, and that's amazing to be able to say that. And that's why I'm really appreciative and I feel very lucky to be doing this job where I can make money doing the things I love. Okay, someone's asked me, does blogging and YouTubing use up a lot of your time? Honestly, like there's no exaggeration here but bloggers are the hardest working people I like some of the hardest working women I've ever met in my life you know on the occasions that we sit down together and we actually just get to catch up with one another at events or you know in free time for a coffee everyone is literally burnt out 
not to mention most of us have mental health problems because let's face it, social media is bad for your mental health. It really is a tough slog when you're working for yourself. Um, you never know what your income's gonna be month to month. You jump on, you, you take a job on, maybe you don't really need, but you think you might need, and then five other jobs come in that you have to commit to, and it's like, it's a massive juggle. Do I have time for myself? Um, to be completely honest, the last few years I've worked pretty much seven days a week and it was only last week when I was in my hotel room in France when I started crying after posting an Instagram picture because I was just feeling so burnt out that I was like something needs to change so my focus for 2019 is very much doing this job still but being way more five days a week rather than seven and if that means I miss out on you know more likes or more views or whatever I'm doing things slower then that's just how it is because obviously my health is important too and nothing is worth being stressed over. So to answer your question, it is a full-time job if you allow it, but obviously it's the nature of the job that makes you wanna like grow and grow and grow and like reach more people, get more likes, have more comments, you know, because that in turn, to be completely honest, means the more people you reach, the more likes you get, the more you can charge for what you're doing. So that's why people are like, busting their asses seven days a week. It's not good for us, it's not gonna last, there will be a burnout. It's gonna happen to most of us. I think the best approach is always to be a lot more balanced with your time. So I got a lot of questions about how to get started. I wish I could say like there's like five key steps to like launching your blog and gaining traction, but honestly there's not. And with the industry being so young and also changing at such a rapid pace, what's popular or what's trending or where people are actually consuming content is changing on a day-to-day -day basis. Blogs aren't as well read now, but saying that, the type of content that people wanna see on blogs um, is changing as well. So for me, what does really well on the blog now is like personal opinion pieces and think pieces. That's really, 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 really popular. Like your traditional review stuff doesn't do so well, I find anymore. Anyway, getting off topic. How to start a blog. Honestly, just start. And I know that sounds crazy because I feel like a lot of people will want to know what they have to do to get started. Buy your domain name, write 10 posts or covering the topics that you want to cover on the blog and then get it out there. Nothing happens without you actually starting so you honestly have to sit down and put in the fucking work. Same scenario with YouTube, like my blog started before the YouTube. Oh my god, I was so awkward when I first did my YouTube, like it just comes with practice, it comes to like getting used to talking in front of the camera. Not even the most confident person sits down in front of their camera to do a YouTube video for the first time and sounds like they've been doing it their whole life. It honestly comes to practice. So again, just get started and then you'll find your niche, you'll find your groove and then when you start really loving it, that's when the passion comes through and then people love that. They come. If you're passionate, people get passionate about what you're doing. Being a fashion blogger, do you get a lot of invitations to fashion shows and other events? Yeah, part of my job is to go to events and fashion shows and parties and it all sounds very glamorous and yes, often it really is. Like the other day I went to The Box for a headphone launch and Tove Lo performed. I went to a YSL Fashion Week party in a really cool club and they turned it into all like YSL like branded stuff. There were like sinks full of lipsticks that we could just help ourselves to. It was insane. Like. I went to Paris the other week with Givenchy, they did a global launch for their new perfume Lon today, and it was just insane. We stayed in the most beautiful hotel, we had a lovely dinner, and you know, it was the most incredible night. So yeah, it can be really glamorous, and it can it definitely seems glamorous looking down the lens of someone's Instagram and watching them do all this stuff. But honestly, behind all of these events, we are sat here on our phones like capturing the content, reshooting, oh, get a picture of me here, get a picture of me there, oh, what's the hashtag, at the handle, da 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 da, oh, can't have too many drinks in case I get drunk and I look a bit weird in my pictures, oh, um, and if you're sponsored to be there, then you have a certain amount of content that you need to actually do on the night, and often you'll be running to the brand manager or the PR and saying, is this okay, and they'll be like, oh, no, tweak that a little bit, and I'm like, okay, changing, and like, imagine going to a party and having to do all of that, like, it can be a nightmare, but I, what I wanna do is show you guys both sides, so, Yes, I get invited to all these amazing events, and sometimes I do just turn up, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna have a good time, pass me the champagne, sir, and three more. And I also bring friends with me, but other times I'm there, and I've got my work head on, and you know, as much as I try and enjoy myself, it is a job, because the point of me being there is to show you guys how wonderful this brand is, and how like cool and like glamorous they are. Really do take the 
cool glam fashion-y side of blogger lifestyle with a pinch of salt because I can assure you at least half of the time we are there working and it's not a big piss up like it looks on the Instagram. So somebody's asked me, how do you differentiate yourself from others and become the brand that you really wanted? Yeah, that's a really interesting one because I would, and I'm glad you've said it this way, because I do see myself as a brand. I have a, a limited company in my name, Style Lobster. I am a business. I invoice monthly for what I do to different different clients so I am very much a brand what I really struggle with is also how I differentiate myself from Emily and when I become the brand and that can also be a struggle but I guess that's for a different time how you become your own brand is very much about being you now there's a lot of copycats on the internet at the moment I know a lot of my friends have actually caught people copying exactly what they're doing online whether it's like copying blog posts word for word copying outfits and shooting them in similar locations on instagram like it's crazy let's face it at the end of the day the most popular and desirable blog like job for a girl a young girl these days is to be a blogger i mean that's a real shame because i think everybody is unique and you're you're unique selling point is being you so to even copy someone is just it seems really like short-lived and they work there won't be any longevity in a career for them if they're copying someone else because no one else can be you at the end of the day to answer your question how did i differentiate myself i was just myself and that was the point i went onto my platforms and i always promised you guys and myself that i would always just do me because there's so many other people out there doing things a certain way because they think that's what people want to see but at the end of the day that's tiring, like how how tiring is that, trying to be someone else forever? So my advice would always be when you start and you're trying to like stand out from the crowd, just do you, be honest all the time with yourself and your followers with what you're doing. And yes, you won't get every job under the sun because sometimes you won't say things or like look a certain way that brand, like, and it won't be what brands want. So you might miss out on jobs, but at the same time you'll get jobs for being yourself too. And I know what I'd rather, I'd rather get the jobs that from the brands that want to work with me because I'm me uh, rather than giving me money to be someone else online. Okay, I'm gonna talk about being a blogger and traveling. Someone's asked um, about the travel that I do and is it paid, which is a good question. Travel for me uh, didn't really come into existence until last summer, so summer 2017. I got to the point where my platforms weren't just beauty anymore. They were like fashion, beauty, food, lifestyle, loads of stuff. So it got to the point where I was like, I really wanna go away and travel with my work. So how did I manage to do that? It wasn't easy being a blogger that wasn't travel focused to get brands to wanna work with me for travel. Like my sister, for example, Jessica of The Layover Life, she's always been a travel blogger. So it's, it would always be easy for her to get travel hookups doing what she does. What I did initially was actually book myself on a few like short trips um, so I could capture some travel content and write some reviews on like travel and then once I had them on my blog and my Instagram I started reaching out to loads of travel companies saying hey this is what I do I like to travel can we can we like work together on a project on a hotel on a trip blah 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 I'm gonna be completely honest travel is the most difficult sector to get into as a blogger there's like no money in it and they're very 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 old-fashioned when it comes to bloggers they're still like traditional in the way that they like print coverage they don't really know the value of the Instagrammer or the youtuber or the blogger so in many ways it's really hard to walk up to a travel company and say hey I want to do this for you if you take me here and they'll be like mm, what's in it for us if you don't have like a magazine title over you after a lot of reaching out and a lot of hit and misses I did get a few people saying oh yeah we'll offer you two nights stay here or three nights here flights are never included I always have to pay that myself and most of the time there is food included but not always all your food so I I find and I still find that when I do travel content I am actually putting a little bit of my own money in to get this content done so there's a lot of money questions I'm gonna try and do these really quickly when did you start getting paid or sponsored as a blogger um, I had maybe three sponsored jobs before I went full-time as a blogger in October 2016 not something I could live off but like I said I, I was I, 
a different like I was in a circumstance where I had to make it work so put all my effort in how do I figure out what to charge well this is a problem actually in the industry because the rates are so unregulated you know someone with a hundred thousand followers on Instagram can be charging one thousand pounds for an Instagram post and someone with forty thousand followers on Instagram can be charging one thousand pounds for a post I personally think that it's not about the following I think the amount of engagement and comments and likes and interactions and swipe ups that someone gets from their content should be more of a guide to how much you charge versus how many followers you have I think it makes sense because at the end of the day someone can have a hundred thousand followers and be getting the same amount of likes as someone at 30,000 followers I've seen it it happens it's just how it goes so that's kind of I feel like the lead on how you know how, what to charge there is a saying in the industry that you charge 1% of your following um, so if you had 10,000 followers you would charge 100 pounds for an Instagram post but again I think that initially that was kind of my guide when I first started but I don't think that that like works anymore because like I said in like just a few minutes ago it's based on your engagement not your following anymore when you're thinking about your rates think what it's worth to you think about what you want to get paid for putting in that amount of work and time and effort I think that's the best way to figure it out how do you structure your day how do you find your own routine oh my god this is like the worst question in the world I haven't I feel like I try and structure things but everything always goes out the window last minute because there's always something last minute to shoot someone's not around or I didn't get the parcel delivered in time so I can't shoot that day and then everything gets swapped and me Meetings get cancelled and I can't go to the Amazon. I think the key to being a successful blogger is to have an element of flexibility in your schedule. You know, I try and wake up before nine o'clock every day. I have structure in the sense that, you know, I go to the gym three times a week. I make sure I see my partner three times a week and my friends a few times a week, you know, and then the rest, the work thing, that kind of just has to kind of slot in. I do make an effort to like do shoot days. For example, today I'm filming four videos uh, back to back because it just makes more sense time-wise to do that rather than scatter them out across the week. And I have one full day of meetings a week where I'll go into central London and I'll have back to back with PRs and brands and like da 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 da, -da all through the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner and everything, coffee in between. And then I'll do some content creation one day a week and then I try and do like emails and invoicing and admin and like shopping and returning and ordering all the other days in the week but like I said it's super flexible you have to be flexible because if you're not then you miss out on work and the schedule's always changing so it's just the nature of the job do you ever feel self-conscious filming or taking pictures of yourself in public honestly not at all like I don't have time to be self-conscious I just I, I walk down the street and I'll be like blah 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 and then I do it wrong so I have to like go back to the starting point and I'll be like blah 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 and I'm well aware that someone's just watching me like laughing but I honestly I don't have time for it I think when you're doing it full time so you just gotta get it done plus like whatever piss off if you're laughing at me because I'm clearly enjoying my job way more than you so the eternal question how do you grow your following again it's just like the how do you get started question there's no real set step I mean I know loads of people have written blog posts and blog posts about how to gain Instagram followers and you know a lot of what they say is true but I just feel like Instagram changes the rules all the time I can do one thing one week and the exact same thing the next week in terms of content the amount I spend liking and commenting on other pe people's pictures and engaging and all of that and honestly the photos from the first week will have 50% less likes than the photos the next week I call it being in a hole like Instagram just decides one week to put you in a hole they don't show your stuff to anyone and then the next week they're like oh this week we've decided you're fabulous everybody's gonna see your content this week and it's gonna be the week of Emily and Star Lobster and then next week everyone hates me again and no one's seen my shit so honestly it's totally out of your hands I believe that and I know it's frustrating because it didn't used to be that way before the algorithm and now people are resorting to buying followers and buying likes and all of this stuff just because they can't bear to see their engagement drop one week and grow up the next and I know it's tough but I would always say never resort to that because it's not worth it people look into that shit and when you get pulled up for it it's just gonna be embarrassing anyone that understands Instagram will know that it the algorithm is so temperamental and you can see anyway if you go back far enough on anyone's post whether they're doing well or not so that aside how to grow your Instagram following I would say these are my key steps be consistent post regularly or as much as you feel like you you can but do it regularly 
regularly. Make sure your content is of good quality all the time. Reply to every single one of your comments in the first 24 hours and then respond to all the others within 24 hours. Anything that goes after 24 hours usually just gets a little like from me because I've moved on and I've posted again so I need to focus on the new picture. Watch stories apparently is a really good one, like interacting on people's stories. But yeah, like other than that, just use it consistently and put out quality content. If you're behind what you're doing, then the passion should come through and people will like it. Honestly, there's no formula and there's no set way for one person. Someone's asked me, do YouTube videos help your brand grow? I mean, I think everything helps. The blog helps, YouTube helps, Instagram helps. Not really though, for me, like my YouTube was predominantly beauty when it started three years ago, but now I'm obviously doing a lot more lifestyle content. So for me, there's a real shift in on audience change up right now. I feel like maybe some of my beauty followers might not be interested in what I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying to balance it with beauty and lifestyle, but I want to give you guys a lot more of this real life content. So there's my YouTube's going through a little bit of a sticky situation. Every time I upload a video, someone unfollows me. Not just someone, like a few people. It's really disheartening and it's hard not to get upset by it because you're putting your heart and soul into everything you make. But I think it's just a transition period for me on YouTube at the moment. What really grows my brand is Instagram. Instagram's where it's at. Like it's just so, instant and like uh, there's loads and loads and loads of content going out all the time I feel like that's where you can really shape your brand and at a, at a glance like clients will see what you're about just by looking at your grid and having a quick scroll what is the best way to contact brands in regards to sponsorships and ads I actually answered this question in the Q&A in the blog post about going full-time as a blogger that I'm linking below but I will quickly just um, let you guys know how I did it and I know that most people don't do this um, I think a lot of people feel self-conscious about it or that they don't have enough like worth to give and it breaks my heart to hear that because I really think everyone there's so many people out there pr producing amazing content that don't have the balls to like open an email and just email a brand that they want to work with and say why that is the way to do it I honestly think that is how I went full-time at 9,000 followers and quadrupled my earnings within a month because I had the balls to write an email and send it to everyone I wanted to work to. And I didn't just write an email, I was like, hey, I really like your brand, do you wanna collaborate? I was like, hi, my name is Lilla. this is what I do, here's examples of my work, I love your brand because, and I have ideas that I wanna create with your brand, I wanna do this with your brand, I wanna film a video like this, I think it'd be really good for you to promote this on my channel. Like, I gave the brand it, like an exciting and passionate email with examples of work that I wanted to do, I feel like, that's why it worked for me. Yeah, I wasn't just sending out emails like begging for product. I was like making it worth their time. I was giving them a media pack. I took myself seriously at 9,000 followers on Instagram. So they had to take me seriously too. Don't be ashamed. Write the email. Tell them why you'd be a good collaboration. If you don't ask, you don't get. So that was my Ask Emily on what it's like to be a blogger. Um, I hope I gave you guys an insight into what it was like. Honestly, it's a career that changes week on week. It's so hard to keep up with it. Obviously, there's a million and one benefits to doing this amazing job, but it is hard work, especially if you wanna be successful and earn decent money, you have to put in the hours. There are no shortcuts, I'm afraid. You need to be yourself and be passionate, be consistent, and if you are all of those things, as well as hard working, then, you know, you'll do well, you'll be successful. Find your niche and be yourself as well, That that's always a winner. So I'm sure there's lots of things I didn't cover. If there is anything I didn't cover, please write it in the comments box below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Like I said before, I will link the blog post I wrote about going full time and make sure you read the Q&A section on the blog as well because there's so much information there and probably a few more questions that I didn't answer in today's video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're following me on Instagram as well. Put my handle on the screen now and I'll link my channel below. And yeah, it was lovely to hang out with you guys for a little bit today. Um, I'll be back next week and I will see you then. Bye for now.